All right, everybody, on today's video, I am going to show you how to use your quail call, how to call in your quail call, when to call in your quail call, and more importantly, when not to, and how to tune it and maintain it. And right here, I got my quail call. I do sell these if anyone is interested. So let's jump into it, and I'm gonna show you how to call. Okay, so let's start calling some quail. And let me clarify that these calls here that I sell and the calls that are similar are intended for Valley California quail and Gamble's quail, okay? Not mountain quail, not chucker, not any of that other nonsense that I've seen some people claim that these can also work for. We're talking about Valley quail and Gamble's quail here. All right, so let's call. So with Valley California quail, you're going to basically make a Chicago. But you're not actually saying Chicago. But what I like to tell people is you're going to start off saying those words Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. And while you say that out loud, take note of the exhale pressure and the cadence you're using while you're saying that. So after saying Chicago, getting that into your mind, then say it again, just using the exhale pressure that you would use to say those words. So, and you're going to exhale that pressure and cadence into the call. Now, when it comes to actually using the call, a lot of people will just put their mouth over it I, myself, I prefer to turn my lips inward and put my mouth over it in this way. And I do that because you're going to get less saliva into the call, which will degrade the rubber band inside there quicker. And also, as you get saliva in there, it'll stop the band from vibrating and working properly. So turn your lips inward, put your mouth over the call, and do it. Now I make these calls on the louder side and I like that so that they can hear you from further away. If I want it quieter, I can always muffle it more with my hands. And that is how you do the call for California Valley quail. Now with Gamble's quail, it's slightly different they will quite often they will respond to the call for California quail, but the call that they make is more of a Chiquico and they will often add a little bit of variation on the end. Instead of just being a Chiquico, it's often a Chiquigago and they will mix it up. So it'll sound more something like this. And that is how you do Gamble's Quill Call. So, now that I've taught you how to make the call, let's tell you when to use it. I will use the quail in the morning when I have not located a covey, and I will occasionally use the call and call out and listen for a response. The other time, well, let's talk about when not to use it. Quite often I will see guys bust up a covey and immediately after shooting and missing, they're talking loudly to their friends and then they will call in the call. The birds are not that dumb. They're, you're not gonna get a response in those situations most of the time. Now, after you've broken up the covey and you can't find the birds, quite often they are still located in that area where you lost them. What I will often do in those situations is I will simply sit down, take a rest, wait about 15 to 20 minutes. And then at that point, it won't be uncommon for the birds to maybe start calling back to themselves again to assemble. But after 15 or 20 minutes, they will think that you're gone and you could call out. 
And if you get a response, you know where they are. I will quite often wait for multiple responses and then go off and hunt the singles out again. So, talked about how to make the call, when you use it. Let's go back to the house now and we'll kind of go over tuning and I'll kind of talk a little bit more about the calls that I actually make here. All right, let's go. All right, back home. Got a variety of my stick calls laid out in front here. Real quickly, I got a mesquite one. Got my daughter's burnt juniper with resin. Mine, walnut and resin. Couple of my plain walnut calls and the backs of calls, which I'm going to use to describe how to tune them. So let's get all these out of the way and focus on just the backs of the call for tuning them. To tune the call, what we're first gonna do is untie any lanyard that is on the call. And then we are going to unscrew the two brass Phillips head screws that are holding the call together. And we're just gonna focus on the back half that contains the chamber and the reed, which is a number 33 rubber band on my calls. Now that we have the call opened up, we can adjust the tension of the rubber band on the inside and that will change the tone. Much like a guitar string, having the rubber band tighter is going to give you a higher pitch tone and moving it to a slacker position will give you a lower pitch tone. Now I don't screw them together when I'm testing tone. What I'll simply do is I'll take the face of the call, hold it in place, and give it a test. And if I like the tone, then I'll put it back together. Another thing to keep in mind is that you really want to pay attention to the position of the rubber band in the channel. You do want to get it as centered in the channel as possible. If it is pushed up too much against one side, that can affect the call and how it works and quite often when that happens it'll only work blowing in through one side or the other and that can happen over time too you're blowing on it constantly through the one side and it works its way over and then it won't sound properly or it'll sound different from the other side all right maintaining the calls so over time there's a couple things that are going to go wrong with the calls uh, one, the, um, the calls are made of wood and the rubber band, and both these are susceptible to moisture, humidity, and temperature changes. So that can affect the tone, but over time as you spit into it, you're going to get moisture in here and, you know, the wood when things get wet, um, I forget what you call it, but it can kind of uh, curl up and it might cause binding in this channel or as you use it, you'll get spit in here and that'll dry up. Or, you know, it falls in the moon dust in the desert and you'll get junk in here. One of the reasons I kind of make this depth uh, a little bit on the deeper side is I think it's less susceptible to having grit getting stuck in there. And like I said, I like them, the volume of them to be louder rather than quieter. So you want to make sure that this channel is clear of debris and that if any of the wood is like if you drop it in water or something or get too much spit in there you want to make sure that uh, you're not getting a little wood fuzz and clean that up and just make sure that part is clean make sure you got a new rubber band and um, that's as far as maintaining the tone of the call. Now also, as you use the call, your lips are going to suck the oil out of the call and you'll need to put some new oil on it. Now, what kind of oil do you put on it? Put on either walnut oil or mineral oil. Those are the two oils that are food safe, meaning you don't want to put some kind of chemical thing on there because you are putting your mouth on it and those two oils will not go rancid so 
you can just put it on with your finger. But there you go. You could kind of see where on my call, I had a little dry spot in the center where my lips had gone. And you just rub the oil on here and uh, a little bit on the back. What you do want to avoid is when you're doing it on the back side, try not to get it on the rubber band because the oil will affect the bands. So that's just kind of how you clean the outside. Oh, it looks really nice and shiny now. It'll dry up a little bit. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that the bands will eventually also break and they typically break on the ends. This is my daughter's. I need to replace the band. You can see it's broken on both sides. Ideally, you want to do this before this happens out in the field. You want to replace the band. However, if this does happen in the field, what you can do is sometimes it'll just stick like right here. Like this will still work. Let me see. Yeah, that still works like that. And you can hope that that works. Or if it's broken on one side, you'll pull this out and you could tie it to kind of get by. But you should always have extra rubber bands. Now all the calls, or most of the calls I make, um, I will put number 33 rubber bands in. These are just ones that you get at Office Depot, you get number 33. However, you could also probably get number 32, and number 32 will work. You'll just have to make sure to tune it a little differently with the slackness. And um, I think that's about it. Clearly the most satisfying part. All right, so now that I've showed you how to call quail, let me share some of the quail calls you can get from me. These are just my standard walnut calls. Uh, it's what I mostly sell. I figure you guys want a nice call. Walnut's gonna match most of your gun stocks out there and uh, you can get a simple either a paracord lanyard or a leather lanyard on it. Now for those of you guys want something a little bit more interesting, I do make them out of different wood. This one's mesquite. Now these are also walnut, but they've got a little bit more nicer figure in them. And these two have voids that I filled with ep epoxy. Do they sound any better? No, they're the same. They just look a little cooler if that's what you're into. Here is a closer look at the one I made for my daughter. And um, she's got a little matching knife with that, of course. That's hers, you can't buy that one. Here's another closer look at my personal call. Also can't get this one. So I actually don't have a bunch of um, my more elaborate ones here to show you. I have done some where I took uh, chola cactus, embedded that into epoxy. Uh, I've done some river calls with the burnt juniper and mesquite. I'll actually put up pictures of some of the past ones I've done while I'm talking about this right here. But if you want any of the calls, you can check the links down in the description or on the main page of my channel. There'll be a link to the store up there on the banner. And um, hope this was informative. If you got any questions, put them down in the comments. And I'll see you guys on the next vid.